Washington, D.C. Roland Martin, good morning. Tom Simple Guy, good morning. Uh, look out this evening uh, on Roland Martin Unfiltered. I'm going to be going to an event in D.C. called uh, HBCU Africa Homecoming. And so what they're highlighting, uh, the link between uh, African nations and HBCUs. Uh, and so we're going to be covering it. And so look forward to Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, this evening, uh, live streaming uh, on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. And so... Uh, if you want to follow us, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. So looking forward to that. Uh, all right, folks, so this weekend I was uh, in North Carolina, Plymouth, North Carolina, the country, Tom. <laughs> the country <laughs> celebrating the, 50, the retirement of Reverend Dr. Barber's uh, mom. Uh, uh, she, of course, 53 years uh, educating uh, there. Uh, and so she said, I am done. And he joins us right now. Reverend Barber, how you doing? Great celebration for your mom. Yeah, man, Miss Eleanor Barber won't be the same, Doc. She rolling came to see her in Plymouth, North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> How deep in the country is that? It's so deep we don't have a one stop light and they just put it in last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> but she integrated the school system, Tom. She was the first African American woman. My mom and daddy left India Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, after the march on Washington, they made their commitment. I was born two days after the march on Washington. They made a commitment to go back to the South where the schools had not desegregated. And it was 1969, 70 before it happened, like 15 years after Brown. You were and born out of protest. Uh, man, I was born on. They said that what happened is I was supposed to be born on the 28th. Uh -huh. But I said, wait a minute, let's see what this march does first. And then we'll come on in the world. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Reverend Bobby, you talk about protests. Uh, that's what you uh, have always done. Always. And, uh, you were convicted of trespassing because the Republicans there were scared. H how are you mm -hmm. convicted of trespassing when the First Amendment says we can protest? And the first and the Article One of the State Constitution, of North Carolina, says that North Carolina sends, uh, citizens must go to the General Assembly and instruct their legislators. And after we had spent time and time again trying to talk to uh, the Speaker Pro Tem and the Senate Pro Tem leader, 35 of us were arrested uh, two years ago. This case is two years old. Uh, 35 of us whose children had died from the lack of health insurance, people who were sick with cancer because of the, and, and without treatment, doctors, preachers, and others protested that North Carolina had uh, the GOP had refused to expand health care rolling for 500,000 people, 346,000 of which are white and 30,000 are veterans, and they would not meet with us. We went into the legislature and we quoted the Bible, we read the Constitution, and quoted statistics about what was happening to people. They that was a, a threat to them? Right. They have the, right. They have a rule in the rules that actually said, and we believe it's unconstitutional. That's why we've appealed that says if somebody is annoyed in the state house and they make a call and say, you know, I just don't like what they're doing. And I can't do my work. Then the police can come and ask you to quiet down and to move or to leave the building. We chose to say we have a right to be here. They arrested us. We took it to court. We got the court. The court would not allow us to argue the Constitution. And so we put things on record. We've already filed an appeal because Tom and, and Roland and others, this is bigger than North Carolina, bigger than me. <clears throat> the, all of these southern state houses have all these crazy rules to try to keep people out of them from protesting and exposing all the immoral stuff they're doing, how they claim they believe in life. But then they turn around and refuse to pass living wages, refuse to pass health care expansion. And so it wasn't just me, but they chose to do that. I got second degree trespassing, two days in jail, suspended um, a year probation, 24 hours of community mm -hmm. service. But we immediately filed an appeal. As you know, most civil rights cases are won on appeal when you go to the higher courts. Right. And we're fighting not just for me but to open up these state houses all across the country. Let's so talk about a moral. You spoke about it with the moral. There's going to be moral leaders uh, marching in front of the White House on Wednesday. Yeah, we have um, over over 5,000 clergy and people of faith have signed a letter where we said it's time to have a, moral, a, a witness Wednesday to go from North New York Presbyterian Church to the White House 
Jews, Muslims, and Christians in full vestment, we need to deliver a prophetic indictment against what this president and this administration is doing and impeach them on the on the basis of of breaking two covenants, the covenant with the Constitution, the covenant with our, 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 our deepest religious values. And, Roland, there is a scripture. I hope Tom doesn't mind me preaching a little bit. Oh, but go there's ahead, a sir. Scripture, Jeremiah 22. And this is where we get these so-called right-wing religionists. They don't know their Bible. They certainly don't know what Jesus said. That Jeremiah 22 says, go down to the royal palace and tell the king to stop hurting the children Stop hurting the stranger, stop hurting the women and the poor, and to stop murdering people with your policies. Mm. You know, there's a, the text actually says that, and that text is honored by Jews, Muslims, and Christians. And then in the, the New Testament, Jesus said to go tell religious leaders and political leaders, you're hypocrites because you've left undone the weightier matters of the law, which is justice, faithfulness, and kindness. And on all of those accounts, this administration is guilty, and we must be conspicuous now in the public square about that. Franklin Amen. Graham's going to be there? Well, we've invited Franklin Graham and them to debate us. They won't come there. A few, well, last week, they had a day of prayer to support the president and the administration to say that what they were doing is so wrong. But again, they won't sit down with us as clergy because there's no scripture that supports the foolishness that they're doing in supporting the gross immorality of this president and administration. We have declared that we're not Democrats or Republicans. We must lift up the moral center. I don't think they'll be there. They need to be there so that they can they can really begin to hear what they ought to be doing and maybe get delivered from that other stuff. What are the details again for what Wednesday? Time? Yep. Yep. We marched. We start at 10 o'clock at New York Presbyterian Church, and then we march down straight down Pennsylvania Avenue uh, to the White House lawn, and we'll be uh, having the program there and then delivering our indictment. Well, my, uh, my Roland Martin Unfiltered cameras will be there, so we will record it and live stream it uh, and have it available for folks to actually watch as well. Reverend Barber, uh, keep 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 putting pressure on them. My man. Got to do it. www.breachrepairs.org. That's where you can find out more information. Breachrepairs.org. And congratulations on your mom's achievements. Well, she's all right, and she, she told me last night she's still looking for another husband, so I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not comfortable? Okay. <laughs> I understand. Awkward. I don't know what to do with that. Y'all pray, pray for me. Pray for me. God knows. <laughs> <laughs>